Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about the college admission process. Our friend over on YouTube, Mr. Isaac Stamper, was the one that suggested this topic, so thank you, Isaac. Uh, we're going to be releasing this uh, podcast at the first week of every month. We're going to be rolling it out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday will be the full episode, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will be each question answered individually. So this week we have a special guest with us. Hi, I'm Rachel Stanback. I'm a business development specialist here at Carnegie Dartlet. And I went to Samford University, go Bulldogs, in Birmingham, Alabama, for my undergrad, which was in journalism and mass communication, and then for my MBA in marketing. And while I was in grad school, I was an admission counselor for three years. So I recruited a lot of different um, recruitment territories all over the country. And I'm really excited to get to use that experience here at Carnegie Dartlet and share that with you guys. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's why we got Rachel on our team today, all about the college and next application process. Uh, and as always, I'm joined with Kara and Molly. So, uh, if you like what you see today, uh, smash that like button and subscribe because uh, it keeps the lights on. We can keep doing this and smash, uh, it. smash it hard. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right into it. The first question we have today is, what is the best way to start the application process? And this is from. I'm gonna get this completely wrong. Tunix is commit. I hope that's pronounced right. Tunix uh, on Instagram. So from everybody's experience, we can start. Molly, if you want to start, we'll just rotate through. Sure. Um, so I actually just finished going through the application process. Um, I'm going to grad school in the spring. I'm super excited. Um, but the way that I started my application process is just to kind of lay out everything that I'm gonna need. Um, and kind of put it in a timeline. Um, so it really helped me to just um, lay everything out, print everything out that I needed to see, and just kind of visualize, okay, so you know, these are all the things that's, that are, that's required, um, and kind of just putting it in a calendar and making a realistic timeline, um, because you don't want to just like start it and have no idea everything that you know, it's gonna be required of you. Um, so just, um, yeah, just laying it out, visualizing, and uh, I think it makes it a little less overwhelming when you can see, you know, the start and the end and just lay it all out. So, that's how I started. <laughs> I think one of the best things you can do as you're starting your admission process is just to start. I think a lot of high school students tend to think, I need to wait until I have everything all put together, and you definitely need to have a plan for that. But in a lot of cases, once you start your admission process, um, that's when admission counselors and schools are able to kind of step in and walk with you through the rest of it. And that also um, kind of ensures that you're meeting deadlines. If you start early, um, that gives your recommendations time to come in and gives you time to edit your essay and, and all that good stuff. So I think definitely just don't let, you know, thinking it needs to be perfect keep you from starting that process on time. So I think one of the big things now is everyone's using the Common App or the Coalition App for undergrad. And I remember when I, we, we just had the Common App when I was applying to schools. And the first thing I did was I think in September or August, I didn't even have my full list up um, of colleges I wanted to apply to, but I just went in, got my account for College App, uh, Common App, and then uh, I just went through all the information because there's a lot of like standard information you need to fill in. like your high school, your home address, your name, your name again, your date of birth, all that information that you can fill out like right at the beginning. You don't need to have a full college list. You don't need to have the essay ready. Just get all that information done in September or now October um, and just complete it as soon as you can so that it's done and you don't have to do that. Any, you, you, it's just out of the way and it's something you can do in like half an hour, hour and a half maybe. I don't know how much information. I don't remember. Yeah, I think even just going off of Kara's point, not to say that, you know, everybody's kind of freaked out, how do I start, how do I start? You probably already have. Uh, you have extracurriculars that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you're probably aware of the deadlines for the SATs, PSATs, ACT, whatever. So most of the time, you, you probably have. And if you don't have those extracurricular activities, it's always a good time to jump in and uh, pick some of those up. So jump into that, uh, 
and Molly having the whole layout down with here's the deadlines I need to meet and here's everything is great. Uh, College Express has an SAT, ACT date wheel that's going to tell you, you know, pre-registration dates, when the registration's happening. Try to plan that around so you're not killing yourself when it comes to it. Uh, for myself, I had my SATs on my birthday, so that was terrible. Uh, so d don't, don't, the worst. don't be like me. Oh, you have to get up so early. <laughs> yeah, and it's a long day of testing, oh, so yeah. don't, uh, don't, don't do that. Um, for, yeah, the deadlines is definitely important. And then with writing essays, too, it does come down. We're going to jump into that a little yeah. bit later. It comes down to what the prompts are. So just get your brain kind of churning. Practice writing. You're going to be writing a lot in school as well. So get a formula down that works for you and be unique about it, too. Uh, I think that's yeah. a big factor. Kind of jumping off what, with what Tyler was saying about extracurriculars, I mean, we have a lot of juniors um, that watch our YouTube channel um, with College Express. So one thing I would recommend right now for juniors especially, or sophomores if there are any, or freshmen if you're, you guys are way out of the game. Um, but um, just start doing stuff. Like do activities, get a, a part-time job, go to events that seem fun. Like you don't have to pay a lot of money to do certain things like go to a fun talk or whatever at like the public library or whatever. It's like just do stuff. Because that's gonna be thing. Those are gonna be things you want gonna want to put on your college application, uh, and they're gonna lead to a lot of really great things for college essays. Just saying. Yeah, the more you do early on, the more you're gonna have to talk about it. The more you're gonna have to pull from your experiences. So that is extremely helpful. And as you mentioned, just jumping into, you you mentioned jobs. Having a job is important. Mm -hmm. it, you don't need a job, but having a job is something that you can put on your application. Volunteering at a soup kitchen or volunteering helping is something that's free to do, is something that's going to make you feel a lot better, and something that's going to give you a lot to write about as well, too. Um, yeah, and that gives you the, the experience. It, it helps you learn that balance. Last time we were talking about the, the work-life balance with college, having like a job or an extracurricular where you're in a leadership position, that gives you um, a bit of sort of knowledge of what's coming in the future that will help you find that work-life balance because you have to focus on school that's important but you also have to focus on the job too and it doesn't have to be like you're working 20 hours a week it could be a weekend job or I, I worked seasonally in college or college and high school where I would work in the winter at one place and I would work in the summer at a different place and it was really great experience for me and it helped me a lot in my application in a lot of ways because um, it gave me like I said topics to write about for so, um, supplemental essays and it was it was, that's an activity that you can put on under the activity section too, is I had, I worked X amount of years at Joe's Burgers or whatever. Um, okay, so this is gonna sound really, really simple, but um, if you have a computer, um, I think the easiest way also is to obviously, like when you have picked out all the schools that you wanna apply to, this is gonna sound so simple, but just make like a, a college application folder. And then in that folder, have all the schools, you know, um, divided up. And I know it sounds really simple, but um, I feel like that visually just helped me so much in just organizing all my stuff. Because I do have the tendency to just have like a bunch of documents and all this stuff on my desktop because I'm just a messy gal. Um, but that really helped me. And like, you know how I meant, like, uh, you know, here's like a checklist for um, whatever, or like the Common App, or. Uh, transcript, whatever. So just having them all organized and so you don't get things confused, especially if um, different schools require, you know, very different application, um, like essay topics and all that. So just making sure that you, so it's all organized, it'll be much less overwhelming, I think. So yeah, and you can also color the folders, make them like the school colors, make it fun. <laughs> I mean, at least that's what, <laughs> that's kind of sad if that's like the kind of fun that I have, <laughs> coloring my folders, but. I like that it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, just a, just a little pro tip. Yeah. I think, and Molly touched on it too, I think most of us didn't say it, but selecting schools that you're yeah. interested in. You should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little important. Kind of <laughs> first things first. Yeah. So definitely sort through the schools, and you can do that before you start the college application process as well. Narrowing everything down to what you like, what you don't like, uh, school size, and 
faculty size and, and all those things, what's important to you, and then you can jump in and see what they require. And as Molly mentioned, separating out all the different folders and, and working it that way. So I think that works out well. And one of the, the last things you want to do is, is before, like right before you hit submit, you want to pay the like application fee or whatever, because that's not refundable. Um, and if you get to like the end of October, the beginning of November, and you've gone on a school visit, and you go to one of your safety schools or whatever, and you hate it, you cannot stand it, you don't want to apply to that safety school, even if it's just like, this is just in case like no other school accepts me. Like you, what if no other school accepts you? Schools will accept you, I promise. But like I, one of my safety schools I got on campus, I was like, this is never gonna happen. And my parents were like, well, you should still apply because you know, it's a state school, you know, it's a good school to go to, it's a good name to have, and I was like, I'm not, I'm never gonna go here. So I'm not going to waste money applying to it. I'm not going to waste the time applying to it. And if you feel that way about any any school, like no matter what your parents say, just like it's it's not going to be beneficial to you if you put in the time to do something that you're you know you're going to hate. Um, and just you know be mindful of that. Know yourself really. Um, know and, thyself. Yeah, know thyself as Polonius said. <laughs> I think the only thing I agree uh, definitely for the most part on that. The only thing I disagree with is if you do apply, that you're getting that practice. Uh, so, I, I agree, don't send the money, <laughs> however, if you're in that early stage of, okay, yeah. here's what that school has, this is a safety school for me, if you go through that entire process and then you don't decide to apply, at least you have that in your back pocket, that you have that experience, yeah. and you know mm -hmm. what you're doing. So our next question is, how do I write the best application essay? What impression am I supposed to make? Am I supposed to let myself shine through the essay or do I just write it? So this is a really important question to ask yourself. As Tyler mentioned earlier, I think a lot of your application is kind of when you get to your senior year, it's kind of set up already. You've chosen your extracurriculars, you've chosen the classes you've been enrolled in. So in a lot of ways, your essay is a really great opportunity to craft the message that you want to tell a school. I know when I was an admission counselor, I really enjoyed getting to know prospective students through their essays um, in the way that they wanted to present themselves. And I think a lot of times there's a conception that there's a certain format you should follow for your essay. It should be really dramatic. It should be really funny. And um, I think admission counselors can pick up on that when you kind of force your essay into a format that's not really you. One of the most important things you can remember is, um, you know, through your whole college admission process is to apply to schools and, um, you know, to be just truly true to who you are throughout the whole process. One of my favorite application essays I read as an admission counselor was entitled, I Am Scooby-Doo. And a guy had actually written his essay, the first few paragraphs were about being in character as Scooby-Doo and what he learned from that experience and how it brought him back to his childhood. And it started off and I was reading it and reading about how this guy was Scooby-Doo. And at first I kind of thought, I don't really know how to take this. Where are you going with this? But he ended up kind of wrapping it up, talking about he was Scooby-Doo in a school play. And that was something he had really worked toward. And the childhood dream was to be in the school play. And um, it was really funny and really memorable. And it was I, as an admission counselor, I could tell that it was funny, it was also really well written, well structured, um, so it was true to who he is, and I think that's the most important thing you can do um, in an admission essay. And I think the other piece to keep in mind is to write for a voice that makes sense for the school you're applying to. Um, so you might not write the same essay um, for two totally different size schools or you know, if you're looking at two different types of programs, I think as much as you can tailor your essay in a way that makes sense for the school you're applying to, for the type of program you're applying to, that'll really help your essay stand out. Um, that was great. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I think I, t I totally agree with Rachel about um, being aware of the audience that you're writing to, you know, which school, um, what what drives them, what is their mission, and kind of, I mean, still be yourself um, and still let yourself shine, but just, you know, choosing your wording and kind of the approach a little differently. Um, like, for example, my for my undergrad, um, the first school that I went to was James Madison University, and they're very liberal, liberal arts, and they're very, like, community-driven, and they're really about, like, supporting each other, and they're just... 
I don't know, like it's a really good community. So I, my essay was very about like a very difficult experience that I went through and how I kind of like triumphed it through it and became a better person. Whereas the, um, the admissions uh, essay that I just wrote for Johns Hopkins, they're um, more like a research um, technical university and they, they still have a great liberal, liberal arts program, but it's not as GMUE. So I made sure that my essay was more like, um, this is the science of why I want to get my master's basically. Um, but it was still creative, but not as like, um, like tearjerker, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, and also, it, this is, am I supposed to let myself shine through the essay or do I just write it? And I just want to address that. I think that you should do both. <laughs> um, I think that you should just write it. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think, always shine and through your essay and be yourself because the application, all the applications that admission op, admissions officer look at it look the same. So it's, you know, names and, you know, where you went to school, your GPA and all that stuff. And then your your admissions essay is that one chance to stand out and, like, voice, mm -hmm. you know, this is what sets me apart from all the other applicants. So I think that you should definitely um, take that opportunity because that is a huge, that could be a huge advantage to you. Yeah. I know a lot of people like myself who, you know, I didn't have the GPA to get into certain schools, but I think my essay was, like, the little push that was, like, Look, I know that like my I'm not a 4.0 compared to other people, but I do have a story and I do have a lot of potential from you know because of where I come from. Um, so I think just take advantage and shine like the sun. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think and Kara did mention the Common App, which is a really great resource if you're planning to apply to a lot of different schools. But if you do write a Common App essay. I think definitely take advantage of if there's an opportunity to do maybe a supplemental essay for a specific school that really gives you the opportunity to tailor what you're saying in a way that makes sense for the school like Molly was saying it's important to recognize what that school might be looking for and whatever you do don't name another school in your supplemental essay to another school because yeah, that definitely not happened not when I was too <laughs> bad. Yeah. And it, you know, everybody likes to read about themselves and that's true for admission counselors too. They want to see applicants who have done their homework about a school and um, have researched and started their application for a reason. So the more you can express your knowledge about the school, you know, through the topic you choose to write about and then also maybe even specific references to that school. Um, will really stand out to admissions. I think I did that. I know they're bad. I think that was the quickest rejection I ever got. <laughs> no, well, that was yeah. a thin letter. <laughs> um, but I, I think I realized it after I submitted it. And, uh, so yeah, don't do that. I remember different essays for each of them. Like, I think the supplemental, supplemental essays I had were like, three or four paragraphs, so I was like, I can just write a different one for everyone. Yeah, I'm just going to type it into the thing, like, it'll yeah. be fine, I'm not going to, I'm not, I, I didn't reuse them because I was so, I knew I would do that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did it. I mean, so just be careful, because it, it, I didn't, I did, like, I was reading it so much that I yeah. didn't even, you know, like, pick it up yeah. anymore, because I was just, like, you know, so used to looking at it. Yeah. So. If you're going to do that, if you're going to reuse a supplemental essay, what I would recommend is at the end, like, you know if you're going to use X university and then you say, oh, this will fit for Y university too. Do the control F and look for X university. Yes. Because then you'll, it will bring up all the instances and you can just swap it out for Y university. Technology is great, guys. It's yeah. even uh, proofreading. Do that. It's key. Very important. <laughs> so, yeah, take time to go through it meticulously and yeah. make sure you don't have any of those issues, mm -hmm. also give it to somebody else. Have somebody else read through it. Read it out loud. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everything helps. No matter how many times you've gone over it, you're, you're going to find something. Sometimes somewhere. that's the worst thing too, is just going over it constantly because then you, you're like, this isn't works. I don't, I don't think any part of this is a sentence. It yeah. becomes that point where you're looking at a word. Is that how you spell it? And it is, yeah. but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Like yeah, how I your mother for two yeah. where they're like bull, bull, bull. That's it. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> but a exactly. whole essay worth. And yeah. that's when it's a really good opportunity to take advantages of the advantage of the resources you already have. Mm -hmm. You have an English teacher, 
you have friends who are also applying to college. I think the more eyes you can get on your essay, the better to make sure it's reflecting who you really are as an applicant. Even you know, reach out to your admission counselor at the schools that you're really interested in. Um, ask them for feedback before you submit your essay, and that really demonstrates another level of interest in that school and then seriousness about your application. So, going off of that, two things. First, choose your friends wisely. Because if you, if you're, I mean, we've all okay, done advice. peer editing in class. Oh. And some yeah. people hand you back the paper and they say, this is good. And they don't give you any constructive criticism. Don't go to those people. Go to the person who will send it back to you and say, here's all this, like, here's some good stuff, but here are the things you missed. Here's where you can make it better. Claire um, Carter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My boss, who's fantastic at her job. She's like, literally, I think, and I'm like, can you just try? <laughs> um, so yeah, so go to the, the Claire Carter of your class because they're going to be fantastic. Um, and then second, don't write your essay like you're writing a school essay. That is not the format you want for this because you don't want like, and therefore this is how thus I became such as I am. That's so boring. Um, like, it, unless you're like, it's a, like character you're putting in, like mm -hmm. I am Sherlock Holmes or something like that. Um, you, it, it, no one wants to read a school essay, <laughs> except teachers who have to assign them. Um, so you want to, like Rachel was saying, like work for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, the audience wants to hear more of a narrative thing. But tell them a story. Tell the admission office, tell the admission counselor a story um, in your essay. Don't just skew, skew out facts like you would in the standard five paragraph essay that I hate so much um, for other reasons that don't, we don't need to get into. But like, just put yourself in there um, and write it, but don't do it, don't expect it to be like, this is for a grade, like I need to get an A in my English class and analyze my life or anything like that. Just, just tell a story, be yourself. And uh, just to close things off to answer the prompt, don't Go off thinking that you wrote the best thing ever. It could be the best thing ever, but yeah, if you didn't answer the, the prompt, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge issue. So, closing statement there. Yeah. <laughs> so, our next question is How important are the various parts of the admi admissions application process, and what are some ways to stand out? Um, so, I think, um, again, I mean, we were just talking about essays. I think that is a very important part of the application process and I guess arguably one of the most stressful just because it's, you know, the one part that you really um, put a lot of time and effort into. Um, but I think also something that's really important um, and uh, I'm not sure how accessible undergrad um, admissions advisors are. I don't really remember. They're the best. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, when I was applying for grad school, um, I made sure to show as much initiative as I could. Um, I set up, you know, two or three calls with admission advisors and counselors. Um, I attended um, all the webinars that they had about the program. Um, I checked in with my admissions counselor every every week, emailing her, asking her questions, um, and you know, I would I purposefully asked really um, um, like a cute. I was going to say obtuse, but it would be acute, right? Yes. Small. Small. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. acute, qu mm -hmm. specific questions that you can be answered in the application because don't do that. If you can just answer a question like, when's the deadline? And it's like, they're like, okay, look at the application. I haven't read it. Um, but, yeah, so I just think, um, you know, showing them that you really are interested and you want to learn more and putting your name out there. Um, so when, say, you know, you had a... a an appointment with an admissions counselor and your application comes into their lap and they're like, oh my gosh, I remember talking to Molly. We had a great conversation, great gal, her essay, you know, turned out really well. Like, you know, she or she or he um, may have, you know, more of an inclination to let you in because you put yourself out there um, and show that you have an initiative. Um, so I guess just for me personally, that's, you know, how um, I stood out. So I guess just if there's any opportunity for you to put your name in front of somebody or, you know, an extra way to stand, like, you know, um, just be involved with the school during the process, then take it, you know, do everything you can to just, you know, again, put your name out there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's a really great point. I think if you think about it as if you were an admission counselor and you were looking at two similar applications, pretty similar grades, pretty similar extracurriculars, um, one of the best ways you can differentiate those applications would be the level of interest that that student has expressed to you. And, you know, don't overlook the little things like sending a handwritten note in the mail. That's huge. And I would always keep notes like that from students that really indicated they were interested. Um, take advantage of opportunities to meet your admission counselor when they come to your high school during lunch or they're at a college fair or they're spending time in your area. Um, that's really going to indicate another level of interest um, in admission and in the scholarship process. I know as I, when I was an admission counselor, the students that I got to know as they were applying, a lot of those same students were the ones that came to my mind as I had the opportunity to recommend them for specific scholarships. So don't miss out on great scholarships down the road because you didn't get to know your admission counselor. Search for scholarships on college expenses. Yeah, these are great resources. <laughs> I mean, some fun ways to stand out. We were talking about extracurricular activities, um, and you can back me up here or not, but like, I feel like if you have some interesting, not not quite ordinary um, extracurriculars, that can kind of make your application stand out. Like, that seems pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're the head of your high school circus, I feel like you would want to look closer at that application. And be like, what? Um, <laughs> Um, or Circus something. of one. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. <laughs> High school really is a big thing, guys. I'm the best clown. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like some, you know, having fun activities that you, you're you really passionate about that are, yeah. aren't necessarily like the cheerleading, the football, and there's nothing wrong with cheerleading the football, but it's, you know, most schools have those, so like not every school has a rodeo or a circus of one. Uh, so, um, yeah, I did robotics in high school. I think that's yeah. grown. Mm -hmm. tremendously since I was in high school but that was something that was definitely unique at the time and able to kind of pop out and I went into coding so it, it yeah. worked. Definitely and I think admissions committees too can tell the difference between a senior who signs up for a lot of activities all at once just to list it on their application versus you spending time over the course of high school getting really involved in a few things that you're really interested in. I think that has huge dividends down the road in college, but then also in your admission process. If you really find those things that, not the things that you think sound impressive just to list them, but the things where you can see, here's where I have opportunities to really contribute and things that I'm really interested in. Um, it's better to be, you know, a mile deep and an inch wide, I think, than um, what is it, a mile wide and an inch deep, so, yeah. Um, I do have, okay, so something to add, and Rachel, I bet you can um, back me up on this, maybe, but um, I feel like every single part of the application process is important. Yeah. Um, so to take every single part of the application and give it 110%, just making sure to read every page over and over again, even if it's just, you know, filling out information, but just making sure you spell your name, write your address, um, checking out the appropriate things, and just following the directions. Um, I know that there's, you know, bigger, more important parts that stand out about the application, like, you know, the essay, or if you submit a resume, or, um, you know, recommendation letters, but I, I do feel like you shouldn't um, take any effort away from the other parts, um, mm -hmm. and giving all of it your best effort so when you submit it like you know you have those I, I mean I feel like I had those applications where I submitted it and you just kind of feel really good about it You're like I gave that like 120 and a half percent I'm gonna get it and like you feel good about it because like otherwise you're gonna submit it and it's just so much anxiety waiting to hear back from them like when you uh, put the wrong school name <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> don't do that but yeah so um, uh, do as I say not as I do and um, take all parts of the application very seriously. I think that even goes to when prepping and what's the most important part is pushing yourself. Jump into courses that are gonna challenge you on a different level. If you're really good at math, jump into an AP course for math. If you have a lower grade in an AP course, that's fine, because if you were in the regular math course and you had that high grade, it's going to look that, oh, this kid took the extra time, the extra effort. He went into the AP course and he's pushing himself to move forward and, and 
go forward. Same thing with the extracurriculars, if there's something that, again, I mentioned robotics, something that seems kind of quirky and interesting that you want to try out, dive headfirst into it. If it doesn't work out for you, jump out. It's not a big deal. Uh, find something that's unique to you, something that you like, and that's actually going to help you out in when you're deciding what major you want to jump into, too. You're going to start to develop, oh, I really like these things, and uh, you know, you might not be a chess major, but uh, that will give you logic, and you'll be able to move forward with different things. There's also a lot of um, a lot of other ways to stand out. So I was reading several articles, not just on College Express, but like from many sources that are reliable, um, and like in interviews and things. And it, be very aware of your social media because back me up here. I believe most admission counselors will look at social media. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I saw. I, I think it was on like U.S. News that it can help or hurt you. So if you're like talking about bad things, so there was that that um, thing about the Harvard University kids who posted um, some really bad memes, um, and they had their really their admission rescinded. <laughs> no, it was like racist, sexist oh. stuff, and it was like it was in bad taste, and um, they had their admission um, rescinded from them. Uh, whereas there are plenty of things where it can help you. So if there's something like you're going to an event um, for a local charity. And you don't. There's no place to put that on your application. You post about it. You're live tweeting. You're posting up Instagram things of you volunteering at different events. Like that can help you with an admission council. Look at that and say, oh, this seems like a really good student. They seem really dedicated to this cause. Um, and especially, you know, that's something to bring up if you have like interviews or Zimi is a big thing right now where you can post videos and answer questions. And in those areas, you want to make sure that you look professional. Like no one's expecting a business professional to walk in, but you know, you do want to look. You know, like you don't want to go in with like ripped jeans and a baggy sweatshirt for an interview, and you don't want to post that with your zine. You do want to look professional and um, try to be, you know, try to be impressive, but not like over impressive. Like, like I said, no one's expecting you to be perfect. Yeah, I think it's just important to be aware that it's a part of who you are on a public level, and in a lot of ways, applying to college is really good practice for applying for a job. And in all of those different situations, you know, your employer, the school where you're attending, they want you to be a good reflection of that institution, I think. So making sure that you um, are consistent with, you know, it's like Kara said, you don't have to change your whole self, but um, making sure you're putting your best um, self out there for the world to see. And, um, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to check your different accounts before and, and a lot of times, um, I know applications will ask you for those different um, accounts so they can follow you and give you an opportunity to connect with other prospective students. So social media can be a really great tool as you're going through your application process to get to know schools, to get to know other students that are interested in those schools. Uh, but it is important to be aware of the information you're putting out there for the world. Yeah, make sure to stand out in a good way. Yeah, and just. Don't just delete your account if you're afraid of something. Or you can just make a new one. You no. can make like a school one. Yeah, but yeah. I had a, like I had a friend who <laughs> Yeah, like Molly Harding and JMU wanna just like have my like I kind of like an admission counselor will see. Yeah. And I forget to do that. She was applying to a job and she was like, I think that like seven years ago I posted something that had like mildly bad language. I'm gonna delete my um, Twitter and I'm like just delete the tweet. It's from seven years ago. Yeah, I feel like uh, they're not going to dig that. Yeah, and if either. you just, if you, I feel like if you delete the account, like just yeah, randomly, like that's going to be like, <laughs> why did they do that? Yeah. Yeah. I think another way that you can think about standing out in your admission process is just being really aware of that personal connection with the schools. I know when I was an admission counselor, a lot of times we would reach out to students through um, calling them, sending them emails, and that kind of thing. I know it's scary to get phone calls. Sometimes I get freaked out to get phone <laughs> calls. So nice. But yeah. your admission counts are really nice. They genuinely want to get to know you and your interest in the school and follow up with you. So even, I think sometimes um, students are kind of hesitant to say too much or not say the right thing to their admission counselor. I think just take advantage of opportunities like that to have them get to know you as a real person. You can ask them questions about your admission process, about the school, 
and it, it is a really good way to, um, to make those personal connections and really, really stand out as an applicant when you are willing to answer your phone or um, respond when they ask you questions. And then a lot of times, too, schools will have different events through the course of the year. So maybe in the early spring, they'll have an event where you can come to campus with all the other students who are admitted in that class. Um, so don't just think about your visits being like summer before senior year, but even after you've gone through your application process, um, go back to the school, do an overnight visit with a current student, do um, an event that's designed for all the admitted students, and really think through, like Kara was saying, um, is this a campus where I could really see myself day to day? So our next question is, do you think it's more beneficial to apply somewhere you really want to get into with an early action application or a regular application? where you'll have some grades from senior year on your transcript. And this is from Abby dot Oosterling, or Oosterling? Ooh, Ooh Sterling. Ooh, Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, Abby. Um, and the first thing we want to talk about is that early application means November or December of your senior year. Uh, you're not going to apply during your junior year unless you're like really smart and you're graduating from high school in junior year. Um, so don't like be worried about like they're not going to have any grades. They'll have your um, like first semester, first quarter grades. Also, they will get your final transcript from the high, from your high school. So don't get senioritis if you have an early application, early decision acceptance because that can ruin you. Yeah, I think it's important to go over all mm -hmm. the different options there. Yeah. Uh, so early decision is you're not bound to that school, but no, early decision is bound. Is bound. Early action, <laughs> back it up. Early action is non-binding, yeah. so you can apply to as many schools as you want, mm -hmm. and it's in that November. It's in that like November, early rate. December ish area. Right, and then you're going to hear back almost a month or two. Yeah, within right a few weeks to a month. So you'll get that back, uh, and again, you're, you're not bound to it, so feel free to do that for as many schools as you'd like. There's also one that's kind of an outlier, which is the single choice early action. Yeah, it's a weird one. But single choice early action is, again, non-binding, but you can only do it to one school. So there's only a few schools that have that, but just in case you come across it, be aware that you can do early action uh, or single choice early action, but it has to only be with one school directly. Early decision is what I said earlier, and that's why. Early decision early? No, yeah. <laughs> So early decision is binding. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but you can send out as many as you want, but if you get yep. accepted immediately, you have to call and yep. cancel on the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the same time frame. Yep, early December, uh, late November. Yeah, and then we have the regular decision, which is, I feel, the majority of people are gonna be rolling yeah. through, and that's uh, usually January and February, uh, yep. that time frame, and then you're gonna hear back in around April. Yep. And then there's rolling. Yep. So rolling admissions are after April. It's until the the uh, program that you're picking is filled up. So yep. those are all the different options. There's a ton of them. Hopefully yeah. it's not confusing. You can rewind this video. You can stop, pause it. Uh, just don't go back to the beginning when I messed up. <laughs> I, I always imagine like rolling admissions. Like I think of like admissions rolling on the ground. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah. I can't help it, but yeah. if that makes the college application process a little less intimidating, yeah. just imagine them all like rolling on the ground. See, my neck went to the biscuit. Keep on rolling, 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 rolling. Yeah. Rolling, rolling, like a rib, like rolling, rolling on the river. Oh, well, that works too. <laughs> um, we all think of different things, but I like it because um, it, you hear back so fast with rolling admissions. So you can apply in like December, you'll hear back by January because it means that once they get your application, they're going to process it, they're going to look through it. Whereas with like a regular decision, they might wait until the decision, the, the, the deadline um, to start looking at applications. That takes forever, and then you're sitting there for like a month and a half, and you're like, I applied in December earlier than I was supposed to. It's April, I haven't heard. <laughs> And it's just stressful. Yeah, Rachel, I have a question for you, like about this yeah. question. So, like, as an admission counselor, I guess this is what this person is asking. But like, would you take into consideration a student, like, say that they are there's two applications in front of each other, and one of you know they're both similar or both good? Would you consider one of the other if one was early or one was regular? I think it totally depends on the student and the school where you're applying. 
and it really honestly depends on your freshman through junior year grades. Um, how strong are your grades at the end of your junior year? If you feel really confident about them and you're ready to submit those to a school as a reflection of you as an applicant, then um, you might be in a good position to apply early action. Um, but if it is important to you to really demonstrate your senior year grades and maybe you may slacked off a little bit your sophomore or junior year um, and you really need to um, demonstrate that you've been working hard senior year um, then that's important to take into consideration too so again another way that Molly mentioned having a spreadsheet staying organized with the different timelines of the different schools is so so important and it's important to think through what kind of position are you specifically in as you move into your senior year so yeah yeah, I think that the school that I spelled wrong was, I put it down early decision. Ooh. So that was like my school that I really, really wanted to go to. So and I like want to tell you what school it is, but... I don't, I don't think you really wanted to go there. I don't know, guys, I, I don't know what happened. But um, anyways, that, um, so yeah, I feel like... I thought in my head that if I did early decision, like they would think that, oh, this girl, like she really wants to go here, she's committed, she gets in, she's going, but um, just make sure to put the right school name, um, how bad does she really want to go <laughs> yeah. here? Um, but I think, um, I think you should, I, I guess like it depends on the school, what Rachel was saying, but um, even if you really want to go somewhere, apply where it is the most realistic timeline for you and where you're going to do the best on the application. Like if you, um, if it, you know, rolls around and it's November and you have the early action um, application due in a couple of weeks and it's a school that you really, really want to go to and you still don't feel like your application is to its potential, then don't rush it. Um, there's still another deadline that you could meet. I mean, obviously, if you can make that early action, then do it, like take the time, but if you feel pressured and it's not good enough, then I would say take your time. And you know, be as thorough as you can, and um, you know, do the regular. But um, I feel like just do it early so you can find out. So much anxiety. And senior year gets really busy too. Yeah. So if you can start that process early and just have one less thing to do as your classes are getting more intense and you're getting ready for graduation, um, then that becomes really, really helpful down the road. It's, it's super helpful as a stress reliever. I remember I applied to two schools um, early action. Fun fact because both those schools offered scholarship. You like automatically got like $2,000 scholarship if you applied to early action. So we'll go for that. They were both my awesome. safety schools. And I applied early action, and by the beginning of December, I was accepted to both. And I said, I'm going to college. Like, I, it was just such a weight off my back. And I really liked the schools, too. One of them was, like, my second choice um, for a school. And I was like, I'm going to go to college. So it, it just takes a load off your chest. And, you know, it makes you, you it's not going to make you, or it shouldn't make you um, slack off on your applications. But it's just a relief to know okay, I have somewhere to go in the fall. Because um, that was, to me, it was really important. I was scared I wasn't going to get into any colleges. And I just, like, it was just a load off my back. I was like, okay, I can breathe now. I can, I, I can de-stress a little bit. I can focus on my homework instead of that. Yeah, I think Kara brings up a really good point, too, which is senior year, you've worked really hard to get to this point. You've worked on your extracurriculars and in your classes. College is really exciting, and you have a lot of options when it comes to all the different schools you're looking at. That's why you have a great resource in College Express, and um, I think it's just really important to think about all the different options you have out there and have fun while you're going through the process. It is a lot. It's a lot to deal with and think about the timeline and everything, but it's also a really exciting time and a time that only happens once, you know, finishing high school and thinking about your options after. So really enjoy that process as you're thinking about where it makes sense for you after high school. Um, and, you know, keep an open mind too. I think one of the most important things you can do is to not move into your senior year with a set idea of this is the school I'm going to, this is what I'm majoring in, because while you might have that as you start senior year, that can change a lot. You might not get into your first choice school. You might get in and then decide this is not the school for me. So I think one of the most important things you can do through the whole process is to keep an open mind throughout your whole senior year and 
yeah, just be excited about it and enjoy it. And I think uh, just from my personal experience, I did early decision. And so when you just said, don't pick one school, don't pick a major, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it worked out well, but it was one of those things where I knew when I went to Champlain that yeah. it, the, the fit was perfect, uh, every, everything fantastic. So I put in an early decision. I did apply to other schools to do that just in case you don't get into the school that you, you're looking forward to. But doing the early decision and kind of going back to the question, I feel that one in particular because you're dedicating yourself to that school, the school's going to see that and say, okay, he's serious about coming here. So if that comes back, your chances might be a little bit higher because you're doing early decision. Um, I have something to add. So also just do your homework and do your research because there is a lot of information about schools and how many, per, what percent of students they admit for early action or regular regular application decision. Um, so you can kind of you know gauge your timeline off of that as well. Like if there's a school and you find out, you know, you research and you or talk to somebody there about you know what are they looking for in terms of the deadlines and you might be able to find out some really useful information. Like, um, they really like it um, when you do early action. I, I don't know, maybe some school does that. Um, but they do have those percents for, uh, for a lot of schools that data is available, so take a look at that. Um, but I, I quickly add this really cool story, so um, about, you know, making sure that you um, kind of are open to other schools just in case you don't get in. Um, this girl, her um, dad was a teacher at our school and he went to MIT and he is, um, I don't know if I'm like, allowed to talk about like, who he is, but he's like a pretty important person. And so she, and she's like, got um, a super score that was perfect on the SAT. So, and her, you know, she has a, what is it called when you're like, you have a, a legacy? Yeah. Like at the yeah. school? Yeah. So, and she, she's just like super smart, this girl. And you know, she was like a really good athlete. And so she applied to MIT and she didn't get in, which was shocked our school. It was like all of the Social media. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was no, it. <laughs> it was her social media. No, no, no. She was a great girl. Uh, but it was like the shock of the year, like yeah. the drama. And she was so upset because, you know, she kind of. Um, you know, put her heart and her soul into that one school, which I, I understand, like, we fall in love with schools, but, and we all made those hats, you know, like, you can design your hat with your school, and, like, yeah. when all the seniors hang them, are you guys would do that? Yeah. What? Like, we had those, like, little grad caps, and oh, like you can like design, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. Design oh, yeah. Your school. Okay. yeah, and so she, gotcha. she wrote in pencil on the bottom of hers, Yale, because that's, you know, her second choice, I designed yeah. her name, and it was just, like, it was a, a huge. So she went to Yale though. She went. She, oh yeah. She went oh Yale. oh, that's yeah. Terrible. She wanted. It, she wanted MIT. I, I know. know. Like, I imagine getting into Yale. I would. I would. That's the first thing I would tell people. Like, hi, my name is Molly, and I go to Yale. <laughs> Ever yeah. heard of it? Have my Yale sweatshirt on. Yeah. It's the only piece of clothing I own. I had a friend who did that. She got into all her top choice schools. It's like, oh, it's so difficult to make a decision. I'm like, I haven't gotten into to my top choice yet. Can you stop talking, yeah. please? <laughs> but no, that was just like a really like crazy thing, you know, which is, you know, she had put her heart and her soul and just, you know, she got, she was not, she was at subpar with Yale. Um, anyway. <laughs> you <laughs> no, have a lot no. of choices out yeah. there when it comes yes. to schools. So there's a lot of really important um, questions to ask yourself as you're thinking about what's a good fit for you. Molly brought up a great point though about using outside resources. Um, there's the College Scorecard is a great website. Yeah. You can compare schools. Um, just taking advantage of opportunities like that to kind of look at what you're interested in. And I think too, thinking about what your personality is, and then what's the personality of the school you're applying to. That's something that's huge for us at Carnegie Dartlet is thinking about a school not only as what programs do they offer, where are they located, how many students do they have, but who is this school? Do they make sense with who I am, the type of student I want to be, what I want to study? Um, I think that's a really, really important way to think about your college search process is not only what does the school offer me, but who is this school overall? And I just want to mention this because uh, just like as a, you know, cap on everything is that um, I don't think schools generally like have a mold that they want every student to be. You know, there isn't this perfect student that they're looking for that you're not going to get in if you don't match who that person is. So 
um, don't try to change yourself or apply to schools that you know that's just really not who you are. Mm -hmm. um, so it's okay if you don't, you know, if you're very introverted and you prefer not to do like a bunch of social things. Um, I feel like there are schools where you will belong. You know, it's okay that you're not, you know, the athlete or you know the the star in the theater. Um, if you keep to yourself and you know you're introverted and you still have other things to show for that and explain that, then I, I feel like that's still okay. It doesn't matter that you're not, you know, the per you know the the mold of what you would think is like a perfect application to when a college is looking at it. So, um, just want to say, just don't fit the mold. Be yourself. Yeah. And I think one more thing I would add is that a lot of times I would talk to high school students and they'd be really nervous about. The school wanting them which is important and it is a big part of the admission process but a big part of college admissions and schools recruiting you is that they are recruiting you and they want you and they do want you to enroll at their school and so think about it like that you know you've worked really hard to get to this point this school would do really well to recruit you so I think if you go into your senior year with that kind of confidence um, that it makes it that much more fun and enjoyable of a process if you um, really are thinking about not only what could you know this school offer me but what can I bring to this school and what can I bring to the table love that can I just swing this right back around real quick to um, early decision yeah. again uh, because something we didn't necessarily touch upon that is really important not it's not quite a warning but a just like hey know this um, with early decision like Tyler said it's binding they send you a contract and you sign that contract saying you are going to that school and you have to you will have to remove any applications you've submitted that also means you have to accept the financial package that they're giving you um, you can like try to appeal for more but what they give you is what you get so if you end up going to a school and um, they decide that you're, if you, and you apply early decision, and they decide you're going to have to take out thirty thousand dollars in loans. You're going to have to take out thirty thousand dollars in loans, and you don't have that finagling room that you do if you apply to like several different schools, and you can like say, well, this school is giving me this amount of money, and I really like you guys, but it's really important to me, and you you don't have as much finagling room as as you would with other schools. So just. Don't not do it because of that, but just keep that in mind um, because I know that for, for a lot of students, um, the price tag ends up being a, a big definer um, down the road. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, but I mean, that's, I ended up going to Champlain too. I should have gone early decision too because um, my grades were pretty much the same senior year as they had been the rest of the high school. But I, I, I down. <laughs> yeah, my <I> went <laughs> crashing but, down. No, but I was like taking a couple of APs and stuff, so they like based that my GPA stayed about the same. My grades were a little bit lower, but it was like the same. It was like the same area, and just just something to be aware of. And I, like I said, I should have gone early decision because I knew I wanted to go there, but I was worried that I would get a really bad financial aid pa package, and like I think it ended up being that it was like between Champlain and this other school, and I was like, you know what? This other school, I would have far less debt, but I, it doesn't have the program I want. And so, I, like I said, I just tried to make a decision. <laughs> but um, if that is a huge factor for you, just keep that in mind. Um, that early decision is legally binding. You have to take their financial aid package. Um, yeah. Also, that so that brings up a really good point about like your senior grades. Um, some school, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Really, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, the, I think you're required to send your second, like, you have to send your final transcript yeah, to, the, to school. the school, even if you're accepted, yep. and, um, it is possible that they could revoke their decision yep. based on, you know, there's some schools where they really expect you to maintain a GPA throughout mm -hmm. until your graduation, um, so, um, again, do as I say, not as I do, maintain the same effort in the yep. GPA that you were, you know, you were giving in the application, and you were, um, Kind of promoting in your in your essay or whatever, um, because or ride the line. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, literally, yeah. You can dip a little <laughs> bit in second semester because like that tends to be harder stuff. Like you are, it is gonna get harder as the year goes along. Like it is content wise, yeah. that school usually does. But if you go from like straight A's in the first half and then you're accepted and then you get straight D's. 
that's going to get yeah. it. That's well, going to raise some eyebrows. You might have to go in with academic probation already, right, yeah, which is a thing. And that can affect um, scholarships. That can affect your yeah. scholarships. That can change your financial package. It can, like like Molly said, it can um, they can rescind their um, admission, um, which you don't want to happen because then you're like, oh, where do I go now? Um, so do do not get senioritis. If you do just a mild case, mild case is fine, but not serious. Oh, you get it. Everyone's gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I think this, like the last um, half of senior year just flies by because there's so much going on. I mean, just for me, like homecoming and what well, you know, homecoming is in the beginning, but like prom, and then you have all your like senior like events or whatever. Um, so you know, obviously enjoy that, but just you know, do the best you can to maintain. You know, don't make it too noticeable yeah. if you um, fall off a little bit. Suck up a little bit, yeah. but not a lot. But not too much. Ride the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of the College Express podcast. We hope we answered all your questions on the college admission process. If you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us on our website at collegeexpress.com. You can find a bunch more material on College Express, as we mentioned, all the college application process. There's SAT date wheels. There, there's a whole slew of information, so please jump on there and search around, uh, and you can drop us a line there. A huge thank you to our guest, Rachel, today. As you could tell just from watching, lots of input, lots of great material, so we so, appreciate it. Loved it. Loved being here. Good luck your senior year. Enjoy it. Don't forget to ask the questions that you have, you know, to your admission counselor, to all of us. We're here to help. We're excited for you. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, we, should have a, we should have a segment on College Express called oh, Ask Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Direct we'll, feed. We'll, we'll yeah. be back with more information on Ask Rachel. <laughs> So, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and uh, we will catch you the next time in November.